I saw racism that was blatant, but I also had more experience with microaggressions where people would say, you're really articulate. And people think that's a compliment. And it's like, so what's the expectation for me not to be articulate? So I shouldn't be smart. While I have your attention, I want you to know that by saying Black Lives Matters does not diminish the lives of anyone else. I'm Dr. Francois Booker-Drew, and I'm Vice President of Community Affairs for the State Fair of Texas. I'm so proud to work for a place that one, recognizes that it wasn't always on the right side of history, but is trying to do something different. And I'm honored to be able every day to work in community in South Dallas, and I spend a lot of time with our nonprofits and helping them find resources. Being able to do that allows me to feel in some way that I'm contributing to the solution. So I grew up in Shreveport, Louisiana, and I grew up in a community for me that was really segregated, even though segregation was supposedly over because of the laws. Um, I went to schools where it was so few of us as African Americans, but church was the place for me that I was so grounded and loved in and got support. And it allowed me to see all different types of diversity in my community. I saw black folks that were teachers and had their own businesses and who were nurses. And so for me, I saw black possibility, even in an environment where outside of that, you didn't always get the opportunity to see it. I always was told as a kid, I had to be a hundred times better. And the pressure and weight that that creates for you as a child, and that you're the representative of the race. So I remember being in classes and being the only African American sometimes, and having to speak for an entire group of people that are not monolithic at all, or people thought you all looked alike. And having to go, no, that's so-and-so, I'm not that person. I had a counselor in high school who told me, you people don't take Latin. And I remember taking Latin all through high school and all through college. Don't ask me to say anything in Latin right now. <laughs> but the idea that someone didn't think I had that possibility, how many other people have been told those things and decided to believe it? I didn't allow that stuff to define me. It is amazing that we're able to endure the way that we do because you have to be resilient to be able to deal with all of this stuff that's either coming at you directly or it's these microaggressions and it's passive and directive comments, you have to develop some resilience to be able to deal with it. Otherwise, it will drive you absolutely crazy. I got stopped in February. I was coming back from Huntsville and police stopped me. It says my tags, I didn't have a front license plate. Um, and, and I respond to that. Well, it's not my car, it's a rental. Well, you know, he goes into this thing, accuses me of drinking alcohol when it was hand sanitizer, questioned me about why I was renting a car. It happened in the same county that Sandra Bland was killed in. Um, Sandra didn't have that opportunity. George didn't have that opportunity. Ahmaud didn't have that opportunity. It's so many people didn't have that opportunity to come home. I remember leaving there just shaking. And I started sending emails and ended up talking to a lot of people in leadership. But how many folks don't get that opportunity where they're able to say this is wrong and talk about it? So many people don't get that chance and have died because of it. It's the pressure and the stress of just trying to remain alive that causes you to have the, the issues that many of us do health-wise. Many of us have high blood pressure. It's not necessarily because we're all eating bad. It's because of the stress that you deal with every single day where you walk into jobs and there are people who've been there far less than you who get promoted even sooner than you do. And I don't think people recognize the weight that so many of us are carrying and it is exhausting. And yet we still persevere and show up and do it anyway. On my Facebook page, I put up a post that was, I said long post alert, and the whole post was for white folks. What I needed them to do was stop wanting to contact me to process um, because I'm already dealing with my own stuff and my own grief. Just as I have to work through this stuff, you gotta do your work too. So if you're gonna call and you're one of my white friends and you wanna talk to me about what's going on, the first thing you gotta do is talk to me about me. It's not about you. And I think for a lot of people, the first thing that they want to do, and I hear this all the time, I want to do something. And mine is, what I need you to do is listen. I just need you to listen and be available. That's one. And then two, I need you to do your work. I need you to start looking at how do you, you know, get educated about it, reading books like White Fragility, and understanding that we are all impacted by racism. Become anti-racist. 
And that would be my thing for folks now in this season is how do you start looking at dismantling systems that have been in place that oppress people that you may be so unaware of. And it's gonna take time and it's gonna take you being committed to doing your work. And black folks have to think about supporting black businesses, starting businesses and voting completing the census, being involved is so important. You can't legislate, you know, the changes of people's hearts, but what you can do is create policy that does not end up harming us as a community. And then at some point, you gotta put your money where your mouth is. So if you're putting your money in a bank that supports mass incarceration, that is supporting things that are not helpful to the black community, you need to move your funds. Your money is power. So how you're using that is gonna be important. What I'm hoping is people persevere. I hope that people don't just do this as a fly by night. I don't believe it will be because I'm seeing some things that are making me so excited, especially with young people. So we've got to support them and what they're doing and, and combine our wisdom and knowledge with the power and the innovation that they have. And together we can make some things happen. So what's next?